Uriah Parmalee was a sophomore at Yale in the spring of 1861. He uh, grew up on a farm near Guilford. He apparently became, as a youth, uh, an abolitionist of some sort. And uh, when the Civil War broke out in April 1861, he enlisted. Uh, he dropped out of Yale. Parmalee wrote many, many letters uh, from the front. And in those letters, we can actually follow or chart uh, the progress of a very young man. He would have been 20 years old when he enlisted, of anti-slavery feelings. Now, it made him relatively rare to, to express the kind of radical anti-slavery views that he had, although he was not utterly unusual. But we can sort of chart the progress of a young man who believes the Civil War at its outset is caused by slavery, must be fought against slavery, and must be fought to destroy slavery. But he's very disgruntled early in the war because that's not what the war is about. The Lincoln administration is fighting to preserve the Union, uh, seeks uh, a limited war of limited aims, and his letters reflect that. But then comes Lincoln's preliminary Emancipation Proclamation, the final Emancipation Proclamation, and by the spring and summer of 1863, Parmalee's letters changed their tone. I do not intend to shirk now there is really something to fight for, I mean for freedom. Those who profess the love of the Union are not so anxious to preserve slavery, while those who are opposed to the war acknowledge in all their actions that its continuance will put an end to that accursed system. So then I am willing to remain and endure whatever may fall to my share. And what makes Uriah Parmalee's story so poignant, it seems to me, is that this uh, anti-slavery 20-year-old um, goes to war, suffered, wounded, uh, imprisoned, and on April 1st, 1865, eight days before Robert E. Lee's surrender to Grant at Appomattox, Parmalee was killed at the Battle of Five Forks in Virginia, which is essentially the last major battle of the Civil War. And every year when I start my uh, Civil War and Reconstruction lecture course, I begin by telling the story of Uriah Parmalee briefly to the students, if for no other reason than to get them at some point to stop in Woolsey Hall and at least have a look uh, at why and how all those names ended up in that memorial.